Hey everyone, National Master Sean Lei here. I have some pretty good news. Um, we might be having a collaboration with an international master very soon, and so I'll update you guys in the future about how that's gonna go. All right, let's get straight into some more Philodel games. All right, we found one. So this is going to be a 900 rated opponent. I know it's not the strongest person we've ever faced, but it's just to show you how I like to beat people who are um, lower rated than I am. So as you guys can see, my rapid rating is not the highest, but that's okay. It is what it is. All right, so let's see how uh, things go. Alright, so my opponent seems to be thinking in this position, which it's possible. This is not a very common position for a lot of people, so it is a good time to think in these type of positions. Alright, let's see what he's thinking of. Alright, so he comes up with knight f6, doesn't really impede with our plan, we're just going to play pawn e4, we're just going to have a good time essentially. Um, Alright, let's see what our opponent does here. Now hopefully the static sound is gone from um, previous videos. Um, yeah, and in case you guys were wondering, I have new headphones as well. Mainly because, well, my old ones broke, so I'll be getting new ones. These are just replacements, so don't worry about that. Now, um, so this is kind of looking like a, a French defense, actually. A French defense King's Indian attack. And in these variations, you usually play pawn to g3 and you go for a kingside attack. These are pretty fun variations, to be honest. One of my favorite. All right, he just takes, and it's not too exciting, these variations. I don't have too much fun playing these, but white always has a slight advantage. Let's see what our opponent does. All right, knight there. Now, the question is, do I want to play this? Or do I want to just play pawn c3? No, let's just play pawn c3. Maybe we can play here to attack the knight. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? C3 is just one of those solid moves I really like to play in any given position because it blocks a lot of the critical squares here. Just nothing um, too um, risky. Alright, so in this position, I want you guys to think. Let's say your opponent just castles or something. Do you guys see the threat I have in this position? Hopefully you guys do. Take a second. If our opponent castles, what can we do in this position to uh, take advantage? Now, the answer is, well... If he just castled here, we could just take the knight and just play e5 due to the v-shape um, tactic over here. Alright, so my opponent plays e5, which allows me to capture here. And basically in this position over here, after capturing there, he has double pawns, which is easy for me to exploit. So I'm going to play queen e2, and you might see my queen pop up here, or the knight pop up here. And the idea is either attacking this or attacking this. It depends on what our opponent does with his bishop. I'm going to assume he's going to play bishop here. He does not. Um, but I assume he's going to play it eventually, because the other squares aren't too good for the bishop. I suppose e6 is possible, but then my queen can hop in here, which is a little bit annoying for our opponent. All right. By playing c5, he does um, make c6 not a weakness anymore. But as you guys can see, these pawns are not the happiest pawns in the world. So we're going to try to exploit that. Um, alright, maybe, you know what, let's play h3, let's not allow his bishop to get very active over here. Be annoying if it did. How do you want to take advantage of this? Hmm. How do we want to take advantage of this? Hmm, he's attacking e4. Let's play b3 with the idea of probably getting our bishop to a3 and attacking c5. Looks like a safe spot for our piece. And we might want to wiggle our piece into these squares that are very, very, very good for us. Another thing that um, is very useful here is perhaps we might play f3, though that does create some dark square weaknesses, which isn't too... Um, too great, but it's also not the worst thing in the world. 
Opponent's trying to play bishop a6, but that doesn't actually do anything here, so I'm not too worried about bishop a6. If he plays here, I have the opportunity of playing knight c4, or I could play pawn c4. Not sure which one I would choose, to be honest. Both are probably fine. C. Hmm. We can take it slow and steady here because our opponent has this super big long-term weakness here, which is the double pawns on the c-file. Because of that, we know we're not really in too much trouble here. That bishop on d6 is such a terrible piece. So bad. While in our position, we do have a not-so-useful piece, which would be our knight on f3. But there are many places um, that it can possibly go to. Alright, so here he plays knight here, uh, bishop here, which was expected. And I think I'm going to play knight to c4. And the reason why I'm going to play knight to c4 is because now this knight can hop in here in the future. As well as the fact that this is his good bishop. If he wants to trade off his good bishop for my bad bishop, I'm completely down for that. Especially due to the fact that after that I'm attacking the c5 pawn, which is a weakness. Now I can also play rook e1, which is very nice. Alright, so he's trying to play um, queen to a6, I believe. Which is annoying, but it is what it is. Um, I think we just play like rook e1 here. Yep, rook e1, and if he plays queen e6, we just play a knight to d2. Defending the knight, and also defending our bishop on a3, indirectly. Ooh, he plays a6. I did not expect that one, to be honest. Alright, let's move our bishop knight back, sorry, as we planned, and just play queen e3, putting pressure on c5. Very methodical chess, very simple chess. We're not doing anything out of this world, we're not doing anything special, we're not playing any grandmaster... Grand uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, stra like strategies here, and if you do, um, if you play like this, well, there's no way that um, you guys can lose against lower-rated opponents like this. Slow and steady wins the race. So, um, while our opponent's thinking. Um, here's, um, some question. Here's a question for you guys. Since we're having a collaboration, most likely, with an international master in the future, um, what are some questions you want me to ask him? Um, now the question is, can I not just take this? Take this, he takes my queen, I take his queen, right? Looks pretty good. Let's take there, we take there, and we're just up a piece. So our opponent missed this in-between move here. Which is okay, though even if this didn't exist, I'm not sure what the c6 move was trying to do. Maybe move the bishop here? If he was thinking of this, not bad by my opponent actually. Very... it's a cool idea, for sure. Um, Alright, so he just lets me take the piece for free, which is interesting. And the best thing is right now, I'm not going to take his bishop because that fixes his pawn structure. Let's going to put the knight back and say, hey, thanks for the free piece. I'll be happy to just take it. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Alright, so eventually we took the c5 pawn. It was the target we were attacking from the very beginning. Yes, we got some bonuses on the side, but eventually we got what we wanted. Alright. He even gives us a free rook too. Sorry, lucky day my friends. Usually when one person at this level blunders a piece, usually things fall apart extremely quickly after that. As you can see, that's exactly what's happening here. Let's get out of the pin so we can move our knight. If he takes, we can take back. Life is very good for us. Nothing to be worried about here. Alright. Alright, so he gives us a free pawn as well. Let's take this. Attacks the bishop. Alright, we're out of the pin. We can get reroute this knight to somewhere useful now, now that its drop on c4 was done. Or we could just move it back and attack e5 and just have this very simple plan of moving our pawn all the way to the end. To be honest, I like that plan very well. Very good. Let's play here with the plan of playing a4, a5, a6, a7. And we won the game. Quite easily, 
Um, it said we had zero blunders, zero mistakes, zero missed wins, so it was essentially just a flawless game. And we didn't even do anything really that special. We saw weakness, we took advantage of it. Alright, now let's play against a 1400, so much higher rated than our last opponent over here. See how well our opponent plays. I actually gained one rating by winning this game. Alright, again we're going to be playing a Philidor. Our opponent's playing quite fast here, so either he knows something I don't, or he's just playing fast. Now, in the comment section below, if you've been watching my Philidor videos, you probably already know something. You probably already suspect something. And you probably suspect that this move is not very good. And if you suspected that, well, good job, you're correct. It's not. Now, I'm hoping my opponent plays bishop g5, because then I have some cool tactics after bishop e7. Now, if he takes, I'm also pretty happy, because that's just a pretty big positional advantage. And as you can see, I predicted his bad moves. Why could I predict this? Well, I've seen it way too many times in my lifetime. You guys see the tactic here? Alright, he does not fall for it, but the tactic was ideas like knight takes here and knight takes back. But by taking here, it also gives black an advantage, because my very... um. You know, scrunched up pieces are no longer scrunched up here. Let's see what our opponent does. Do I want to take here right now? Take, take, take. No, not yet. Let's castle rookie eight bishop f8, and then taking here actually has a pretty big threat. All right, let's do this. Maybe we get a bishop over here. Um, wait, that's a free pawn. No, it's not a free pawn. It's not a free pawn because if I take back here, he has bishop takes h7 check. But the idea is if he captures back, you might have seen my game in which I played at the CUCC. Oh, no, not the CUCC. At the Kasparov Foundation chess tournament. And you just take there so you can play e4, forking the knight and bishop together like this. And that's a win against the 1400. Very, very, very simple. Nothing too complex. This is a simple plan that <laughs> happens way too often, to be honest, at... um. At this level, even at higher than the 1400 level, so many people fall for this. Because people don't notice the way that their pieces are formed here. Knight, bishop, problem. Queen b6 is coming, knight takes here, taking f2. Maybe we even get the smothered mate in this game, that would be pretty cool. Now we're not out of the woods yet, my friends. Just because we're out of material doesn't mean we automatically won the game. We also have to limit our opponent's counterplay and make sure they don't get any sneaky tactics against us. But before we even start thinking about that, we need to think to ourselves, you know, which pieces are you going to give us? So the answer is he's going to give us um, the bishop, I mean the knight. Now, we're going to take here. He's going to capture a rook, and then we can capture his knight over here. Another in-between move. Now, it's possible he can do an in-between move, which is to take the pawn over here, which is possible. Uh, it is what it is. Now, something else he could have done was queen captures here. And the idea is there are two pieces for the rook. Um, but in those positions, it, it's still much better for um, the person with the two pieces. Now, I need to be scared of something silly like the queen e6 checkmate. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to retreat my king and just say, hey, I don't want any trouble. I don't want to lose by any silly tactics, so let's just move the king back. Of course, we need to be scared of some, you know, back rank checkmates, but we should be fine. Let's play bishop f5, bishop g6, develop my rook to like c8. Yep, let's just develop our pieces to good squares. You might be wondering, Sean, why aren't you taking on d5? Well, d5 gives counterplay to our opponent. Why take it? Sure, a computer might say taking here might be good, which I doubt it does. But even if it did, why risk it? Why risk it when you can just play simple chess? You guys know the rule. Once you're up material, like I am right now, your goal is to trade off pieces and have a good time. All right, so let's play queen. Mm, where do I even want to move this queen, to be honest? C7, sure. So let me get this rook over here, trade off more pieces. This bishop's doing a good job as a defender. I'm going to use these pieces as the offense. All right, let's see what our opponent does. Hmm. So he's attacking my bishop. Let's just move the bishop. No harm, no foul. Let's take on c4 as well if our opponent gives lets us. 
We're getting rookie 8 as well, trading off pieces. Very simple chess. Nothing too complex. And you've probably seen me play like this before, in which I just, you know, very simply demolish my opponent. Now, it might look simple here, but I know a lot of people are having trouble, um, especially converting these type of games of material. And what I see is a lot of people are rushing and they're not taking their time thinking about what their opponent's threats are. Every time my opponent makes a move, I think to myself, oh, what is my opponent trying to do here? What are some threats my opponent's trying to do? Is there anything I have to be worried about? And if the answer is ever yes to any of these questions, well, I defend against that. And if the answer is no, then I do my own thing. Just like this queen c5 move. I see this rookie one move was just saying, I don't want to trade. I'm just going to get out of here. And so I say, all right, I'll do a small improvement. Queen c5. Would the engine say queen c5 is the best move? Probably not. But it's a safe move, and I know it guarantees my win. And for me, that's good enough. That's all I need. All I need. Alright, so he's just developing pieces, and you know, I'm just gonna play simple move like h6, just making sure we don't get back rank mated. Now it'd be pretty tragic in this position. And I also need to think about how I want this bishop to come out. I want it to be on f6. f6 would be a very nice square for the bishop. So I need to think of a way to rearrange my pieces so that they're not, you know, all scrunched up like this. So our opponent decides to play queen to g4. Now if you have tunnel vision, you might be thinking, oh, they're attacking my, my bishop. I need to defend against that. But if you really think about it, it's just a free queen. And because it's a free queen, we could just take advantage of it like this. Alright, so now I see f2 is a target. I'm just going to attack it with all the pieces I can. Uh, do I, let's play bishop e5 first. With that idea of playing bishop here, kicking this rook off this file. As you can see, I see a target, I latch onto it, and I spend all my pieces just attacking that um, weakness. Now, funnily enough, I somehow trapped his rook as well. This was not the plan, but <laughs> it kind of trapped it. He has to play rookie three, which allows me to take, take, and game over. So, you know, I'm, I could pre-move this, but it's a very dangerous pre-move. But as you can see, if, it, if I pre-moved it, it would have been fine. All right, it should be made in very soon. If he plays rook here, it's pinned, so we attack the pinned piece. If he moves here, it's just a pre-pawn in g3, so we take there, and that's made as well. What does our opponent do? What does our opponent do? All right, he plays that. Let's take advantage of the pin piece. We're not scared of stalemates, because we see he has so many pawns that can move up over here. So we're just going to check. Um, you know, let's just play the simplest checkmate. Just force the checkmate over here. Nothing special. Was there a forced checkmate? Probably. But as I said, guaranteeing the win is much more important than, you know, playing the perfect moves. Alright, so it said we had zero mistakes, zero blunders, zero misswins again, so essentially a perfect game as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this Philidor, these Philidor games. Um, again, get excited for that possible, very possible, International Master collaboration in the future. And tell me any questions you think um, you might want to ask him. Alright, I'll see you guys in the future. See ya.